I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is such an exciting episode we have today. We have Joshua De La Cruz, the new host of Blues Clues, and Blues Clues, and you. Joshua, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you, Kerry. How are you doing? Oh, I am good. I am good. And this is just, it's very exciting to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm pumped. Well, good. Good. I am too. So this, this, is, this, is, this is perfect. I um, have, have heard a lot about you, and I'm just thrilled to have you on the show. I, I knew, obviously, Blue's Clues when it came out, and I just think it's so exciting that they have kept it going, and uh, they've brought someone in with a lot of energy. Oh, uh, yeah. I, it's, 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 it was such a huge uh, show in my life, especially because I watched it with my little sister, so there's that, there's that extra relationship with the show. And then um, it kind of got me in a strange way into singing because I thought that during the mail time song, um, Steve, the, the original host, was doing an impression of an opera singer. And so that's how I kind of started singing. And then it's not until later when I met him and started working with him, I found out that he was doing an impression of Grover from Sesame Street. And so that, <laughs> the, what a turn of events. I was like, oh man, maybe I would have been a puppeteer had I known that. But yeah, this, it's, 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 it's amazing. Well, there's so many places I want to go. So yeah. before, before we got to Blue's Clues, um, and obviously you're a singer, but you were doing, and make sure I get this right, but you were doing Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was with Aladdin on Broadway for, oh gosh, five or almost six years at, wow. at that point. And I was with the show. It was my Broadway debut. And uh, what, a, what a debut that is. What a, yeah, what a debut. Exactly. It was it was incredible. We st we did the out of town trial in um, in Toronto, where we film now. And I remember thinking uh, after we left Toronto, I was like, oh, I'd really love to go back to uh, go back up there and work again, because I really, really enjoyed it. And um, now I get to do it again. I'm working in Toronto. We're not in Toronto right now, but um, right. when we start filming season three, uh, we'll be up there and, you know, it's, it's kind of come full circle. But I was with Aladdin for almost f uh, five to six years. And um, yeah, I started as an understudy. Then I picked up another understudy. And then I took over for Aladdin for a few months, which was, wow. which was incredible. And then I, I, do, I remember that, I love, I love my job. I love the people that I was working with, um, but there was still something in in there that I couldn't quite put a finger on. That I wanted to do something more, and I loved photography. I love photography rather, and I, I I remember thinking, oh, you know, if I if I didn't become an actor, um, and I weren't married. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, at the time in a serious relationship, I think I most likely would have went into photojournalism, I think. Um, an insanely difficult field and easier said than done, you know, and this is me in my dream, my dream world. Uh, but there was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to help people in some way. And I had acquired these skills uh, training as an actor. And so I was like, well, how can I use that in, you know, because entertaining and, and, um, being there with an audience has its own benefits, you know, uh, socially and, and, and uh, personally, but I, I did want to do, go one more step further and, and help people. And when the audition for Blues Clues came along, that's when I realized, oh, maybe this is the thing that you were looking for. And um, uh, every, after every callback, it just became more and more um, uh, apparent to me that this is the thing that you're looking for. And it's so funny because after right before my last test my last green test the mr rogers documentary came out and that was the show that i grew up with and i was like oh man this is 
the, there were only, it was like a Sunday morning matinee. So it was like 1030 in the morning, back when you could still see movies in theaters with people. Sure. And um, I, we, we were all sitting in silence and then the credits started to roll and there was a collective. And I remember the next day going into my audition and going to visit my wife who was working uh, for a Norwegian cruise line at the time. And I, I was like, I don't want to say it out loud, but I've never wanted a job more. And, and here I am. So it's, it's, it's strange how it, it's totally come full circle first with Steve and singing and then Toronto. And yeah. You know, I, I felt a connection to you and now I've, there's a huge connection. Um, so I'm also a photographer. Oh, and, shoot. And it was just, <laughs> it, it, it's my, it's one of my big passions of life. So yeah, we ended up talking photography forever because uh, it's it's a yes we can. passion of mine. Um, I love Toronto. Uh, I was up there many times with Barney. We actually uh, performed in the Sky Dome with the uh, Barney's big surprise. Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? A kid show in a, in the in the Sky Dome. It's gigantic. Yeah, and we've had Mr. McFeely and Francois Clemens, who played Officer Clemens, on this yeah. show for Mr. Rogers, and I'm a huge Mr. Rogers fan. So. We have, wow. some we have some yeah, yeah. connections connections here. Um, I find it fascinating. It's one of the reasons why I started this show. Most people, that, if not all of the people that have been on this show, didn't start out in kids' entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then they got into it following this, this, this calling, and they just yeah. fell in love with it. I, you know, the, mm -hmm. the audience of kids' shows, they're just amazing. So, yeah. so what was it for you when you got in here and you started, you know, being able to, to interact and react, you know, and entertain kids? Yeah. You know, it's so funny because there, it, it I, the more and more I talk to people, that is the path. There is something that's like scratching at them uh, while they pursue their, um, uh, pursue their passion. Um, and then we end up here. And, and now that I'm here, I think, there, there are many things. I, I, I get the chance to play on green screen, which I've always wanted to do. Um, I get to uh, really stretch those muscles of imagination that like I don't really, and that kind of playfulness that I don't really get to play having done a show for five years. And even when, you know, doing side projects and doing classes and, and um, you get to stretch, but it's still kind of within that wheelhouse. Um, so getting to do that and work at a new medium, and I, I'm such a, uh, uh, such a curious person and, and production, especially film and television production is fascinating to me. And I'm thankful that everyone up there is so, uh, gracious with their time and with, with, um, their energy whenever I ask them, Hey, what's that? What are you doing? Like, why is, what's that? Um, <laughs> uh, amidst everything going on, amidst all the craziness of trying to produce a show, they have, they put some time away to be able to explain something to me. And um, so I, there's that, and that's like kind of like this, the, the personal aspect of the job. And I love the people that I'm working with. I, I, I am in love with them um, because again, they're all in it to help kids um, from the top all the way down. It's so interesting because this show, while we are in the age of nostalgia and like remakes and reboots and um, what have you, the show came back because uh, to go back a little bit, yeah. it was groundbreaking in 1996 because th this was one of the first shows where everything was based in childhood developmental research. And then now we were talking and waiting for an answer from the audience. And so since its premiere in 96, in the midst of reboots and remakes, this came back not just because of the nostalgia factor, the, the nostalgia factor was a plus right. for us, but there's over 20 years of new research um, for how to help kids learn better and more effectively using um, television as the medium. And so it came back in such the, in such a noble uh, in such a noble way. And yes, there is that nostalgia factor. Um, but on top of the nostalgia factor, the kids who watched the show growing up most of them or a lot of them now are having kids of their own or have kids that are watching the show. So not only are we able to educate with 
what we're doing, but there's an entire emotional and uh, relationship with the parent that's watching the show with the kid. They're sharing a piece of their childhood. And so what does that do to all the information that they're receiving from, sc for, from the screen? Um, and it's just really, really cool. And I think that is really rewarding for me to know that I get to play and I get to work the way that I've worked in different ways, but I get to exercise those muscles that I know how to use right. um, and stretch them and strengthen them and, and explore them. But I'm also getting to do something that helps kids get ready for the rest of their lives and, you know, hopefully strengthen the bond between the parent and the kid that are watching that the parent maybe watched earlier. Well, I, I, I think it's amazing and important what you all have done, which is, is there's a balance of the original show. Yeah. And then you've got some new stuff in there too, but it's not like thrown in your face, right? I think a yeah. lot of these shows when they reboot, they basically only keep the name and they change everything else. And that's really yeah. not what you've done. Yeah. And I think it was really important because if it's, if it's one of those things, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Right. Uh, but again, it, it, there are things I, I, I like to describe it in a way, especially because of just resolution alone. Right. Like we were in four by three and now we're like 16 by nine and sure. the, the high definition is crazy. Um, everything that we watch from when I grew up, it's like, oh wow, that was fuzzy. We were watching Seinfeld the other day and we were like, oh, that's not in focus. I think they missed focus there. But again, they were also shooting on film. So yeah, <laughs> like, sure. right. I don't, I can't understand how they did that. Um, but to go back to our show, like it's almost like putting on glasses for the first time. And then like the animation that they're able to do just in the 2D, like the, the detail in the rug and the wall and then blue, now that she's 3D animated, it makes it a lot, uh, it, it crosses that, that 2D screen even further. So while I'm uh, 3D, but you know, when we're watching on, on screen, I'm 2D, I am going through that fourth wall. So there is that uh, three-dimensional aspect in that, in energy. And now because blue is, uh, is a CG and, and 3D animated, it's like we're coming there's a there's a stronger relationship between us and the and the kid at home which is such an amazing way to take advantage of the technology that we have at our disposal while still like you said um maintaining that well some characters are 2d because right. they're made out of crafts right. uh so that which is really really cool and really smart but even within the 2d animation they're able to add a little bit of depth to really uh, uh, accentuate that, oh, these things were made out of like um, construction paper or uh, things out of your imagination that are that you can feel and that you have many sensory relationships with. Um, so it's really really cool. And again, the the notebook. I mean, I carry a, a notebook and pen with me always. I I've always done that. And now, now that why, why have you done that? Oh, so I, 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 I like to have a, uh, I just want to make sure my Wi-Fi doesn't go off. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, I carry a pad and pen because I, I like the tactile um, response and, and to see. And the way that I've learned that I learn best is I have to take it apart. And I think that's why acting works so well for me. I see this. I see the, the words on the paper and then I have to figure out the why the how and I have to like really make it my own take it all apart and then put it back together in my own interpretation and so writing things down on a pad and paper is the same exact way um, where uh, I can just write something down and now there's a physical relationship with the with the information that I have to remember uh, and it's it's just satisfying to cross things off too <laughs> you know yeah. I won't lie it's it's fascinating I don't know if you know this, but that's what Fred Rogers used to do. Really? David Newell told me that, played Mr. McFeely, that he always kept one there, and that taught David Newell to do that. And so I think it's fascinating that you were doing it, and you're doing it on your own. That's just what oh works my for gosh. you. It's, it's so, it's, because I remember, I think when we started getting, when I got my first iPhone, I stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. And I started taking notes in the notepad, which is still, you know, uh, useful if I don't have access to a notepad right. or a pen. 
but there is something different within the relationship of tapping and taking the time to write. Uh, it does take longer and it is sloppier. Right. <laughs> especially, especially with my handwriting. <laughs> um, but it is, uh, yeah, it helps me more. And I love that they kept that about the handy dandy notebook. Like, yes, we are in the 21st century and, and everything is digital, but we're able to make it a handy dandy notebook phone. Right. So there is the smartphone, there is the touch screen that so many kids have access to nowadays and they need to have access to if they're to have any sort of future in this digital world that we're creating like technology is accelerating faster than right. than uh you know our generation can keep up yeah. um so it'd be irresponsible not to to ignore that right. um but now how can we turn that screen into a positive learning experience um we're able to do video calls uh, messages we get emails you can skidoo into apps um, all the things that we can do with a phone, but in a positive way, while still maintaining the benefits of writing down and drawing and taking the time to visualize. I think that's what it is. When you take the time to write a word, you're also visualizing what that is and, and creating uh, stronger bridges to whatever it is that you have to remember. Well, it's and, really fascinating. Yeah, and, and don't you think it's important too? You don't, there's such an art to writing. Yeah, and we don't we don't want to lose that. We definitely, I'm with you 100. percent We want to go with the technology, but we also want to keep being able to communicate through you know through yeah. writing. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, my pen, penmanship is horrible too, so I, I'm with, I'm with you. I, I I stopped caring about it for a long time ago. I just you know let it go. <laughs> exactly. It's like I'm the only one that's now that after I think after we I got out of uh, high school and everything was typed. That's when I was like, oh, I can just kind of like let my belt out <laughs> and just write however I want. It just has to make sense to me. <laughs> right, right. So I, I'm curious, when you took over this role, mm -hmm. you know, obviously what the other actor, what Steve did, um, you wanted to stay true to that, but obviously you want to put your spin on it. Yeah. So where did you go with that? Where did, where did that for you, especially for you growing up watching the show, yeah. Where was that balance that you found to create something new, but also to honor the past? Yeah, that's a, it's, it's a great question. And the answer comes from uh, Steve and then later Joe, when we met in person, um, because there was that hesitation and there was that fear and anxiety because it is such an important show uh, to myself and to generations and many other people um, across many other continents, which is crazy. Uh, so I never saw myself there to prepare myself like, okay, so how would I do this? I just did it. Right. And it was an audition, prepare, how would you do it? Just do it. And now that I've gotten the job, now that I got the job and I had time between that moment and first day on set, I was like, now all that, all the BS started to come in like, okay, well, how are you going to do it differently? Like all this stuff when you were just acting on instinct and, yeah. and your training. Um, and it wasn't until we got into, do uh, workshop sessions with Steve uh, before getting ready for set. And he pulled me aside like the first one. And he's like, hey, Josh, you know, I, I don't know if anybody told you this. We were there early. Uh, but I just want to let you know that, and I wanted you to hear it, that we cast you because we love you and the things that you're bringing to the table. So don't ever feel like you have to do or replicate anything that I or Dono did uh, in the past, like we, we love what you're bringing and we want you to celebrate you and just wanted you to hear that. And um, Donovan Patton, who played his brother Joe, said the same thing to me when we met. And it was that kind of permission almost to be like, yeah. Josh, you know, you know what to do. Like, oh gosh, yeah, line from the show. Yeah, like, right. you know what to do. Um, be yourself. And that is something that I definitely, and I still struggle with, because we're all, we're, we're all a work in progress. Right. And, uh, you know, and I, every time that I think that I, I have a handle on who I am and my values and everything that I do, I, I realize that I'm wrong just because I, I feel like I'm done. We're never done. Right. Um, and that, that we have to continue to understand each other and understand ourselves. And um, I think that was really, really important to to hear um, because everything about the show 
the, the way you handle the work day, the way you handle interactions and um, all the doubts that you get from, from this job. Like I have a, such a great time because I'm constantly trying to figure things out. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's crazy. I, I don't know. How, how did you feel? Cause when you were working on Barney, like knowing that so many people have such a relationship with, with you and the character, did you ever feel like there was uh, an opportunity to kind of like sit back and be like, Oh, this is fine. I got this. Or, or was it always like, you know, uh, was, did you ever not coach? Did, were you ever relaxed into the job where you didn't really have to think about what it what you needed to do it was everything just came naturally you were like in the moment or did you feel stressed because i i definitely felt like i was white knuckling the first few episodes and it wasn't until uh maybe the back end of the season and maybe after the fifth episode where i was like <sighs> like just be in the moment you got this it's fine <laughs> Oh, sure I did. When I first started, you know, there was another actor that was doing the TV show at the time when I started doing tours. So yeah, there was absolutely, you know, Barney is Barney across the board. So we have to keep that character mm -hmm. the same. You know, as I, as I went on, um, and when I took over the TV show, kind of like you, I, there, there was definitely nervous at the beginning. There was yeah. definitely that, but it, it got to the point where you always just straight stay true to the kids. You know, I was so yeah. fortunate to, to tour for all those years. So I got the interaction with the kids, right? I knew mm -hmm. that, you know, they knew all the dance steps and all those things. Mm -hmm. So I think I just got to a point where I just, you know, let Barney honor the kids, right? And as long as mm -hmm. I was doing that and keeping him fun and, and you know, kind of carried this as a peers. So as long as I was staying true to Barney and to the audience, I, you know, I was good. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. I think once I once I stopped white knuckling, even after Steve had said that, even after Donovan had said that, there was still the the new environment, the new work environment. I'd been in. I'd always wanted to work in film and television, and then I finally got it. And uh, the, definitely the imposter syndrome kicks in, and and sure. it's it's the just focus on the kid. I think you're absolutely right. I think once I really started having a relationship with whoever it was behind the lens and so, and and it always changed sometimes it was um some uh, most times it was my nephew uh sometimes it were uh, ki uh friends kids um that i knew and uh, just waiting for their reaction and and seeing like that's when things started to really get easy once i stopped thinking about myself and like okay i got to be true to the, the the characters like no you don't have to be true to the character you just got to be true to the kids you got to help the kids and 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 uh yeah you're absolutely right uh, so I, I i read somewhere that steve had said two of the things about you were your authenticity and your imagination and i think you know, that's so dead on. With kids entertainment, if you're not authentic, it ain't, it's just oh, yeah. not going to work because they can yeah. see if you're faking or if you're cheesy or any of that. And then obviously, especially on your show, where there's so much green screen, yeah. that imagination has, has really got to be something you lean on. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it was exciting. It is exciting to work on green screen. Um, but when you watch playback and you're not looking at something forget about like believing that you're looking at something but when your your eye line is so off that you're like oh that's they're not gonna buy that at all <laughs> and the poor animators they can only do so much it wrong is wrong right. um and uh and they're incredible because the animators are able to fix mistakes and and, and things like that so I, I i'm so grateful to them among many other things talents that they have and and what they do for our show um but yeah it's it's i it's a an amazing compliment and i'm so thankful to you and for to steve but it's uh i guess when i was growing up i ha i have two sisters so i have an older sister and I have a younger sister so i was often playing by myself using my imagination that way but as we grow older like 
we stop using our imagination, especially when we get into uh, more professional work, there is an actual plant, whether it be a real tree or a fake tree, right. but there are tangible things. We have costumes, um, but going to school, it was like a black box theater. So it was all imagination. So we, we all technically know how to act on green screen. Um, we just needed a reminder. I remember one of the, 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 the most jarring things getting on set for the first time was um, the silence. Uh, the other two, like, for some reason, I, I understood the, the only two things, the three things that I did um, for television and for film, they were they weren't on green screen. And so there was ambient noise everywhere. So it, we had to be quiet, but we could, you know, we were still in the environment. And so that felt natural. Uh, but coming off of Aladdin where the audience is right there and they'll let you know right. that a joke has landed or if they hated the joke, um, that's what I was coming off of. And those things uh, that I did for TV, they were all dramas. So nobody was trying to crack a joke waiting for audience participation. Uh, so when I got on set, <laughs> I remember not, I, I, I remember that I didn't realize how quiet it actually was. Because we're in a studio, it's silent. And so I'd do a joke and I remember being like, was that it? Was that funny? <laughs> Nobody's laughing. This is, so I would turn, I feel like, was that it? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, that's convincing. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I had to. I had to tell myself, you know how to do this. You know what the timing is. So just trust yourself. And a lot of that is, is you know, some. I, I have an amazing team that they'll tell. They'll give me notes. They'll be, give me great notes, um, so I can lean on them uh, to to guide my performance along. Um, but it really does make you trust yourself and. And you know, like if you're not authentic to yourself and you're, you're not really authentic in the moment, it's not gonna play to the kids at home right. and they will call BS on you. Um, I think they one of my, my, yeah, they, they most absolutely will. My favorite reaction whenever kids start to put together who I am in real life, mm -hmm. uh, whenever I see them is, is the look of suspicion because they'll, they'll look up at me and they'll, then all of a sudden they'll be like, what are you doing out here? <laughs> and then, then they're like, where's Blue? I'm like, oh. <laughs> do, you, do you get that all the time? Where's Blue? I, oh yeah, I get it all the time. I get it all the time and I feel so bad because I'm like, oh, she's, she's back at home. And they're just as excited to see me, but I know that they'd be even more excited if they saw Blue, uh, which I don't blame them. She's, she's, the, she's the best part of the show. Well, I'm not so sure about that, but I love blue. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love blue. What is the balance for you? What can you let go from worrying about the technical aspect? You know, being on green screen and having to look at these parts. Are you able, or are you able now, to just you know let the creative part go and and just know that you have the technical side? And if you mess up, it's no big deal. You just do it again. Yeah, I think I think it's that. You know. It, thankfully we get takes uh it would be an entirely different story if we had like we had one we had oneers we could only right. do one take um but it's it's really the, my success in the effortlessness or the my ability to play on set comes from how prepared my crew is so the crew that i work with um the director to the pa to to everyone they they make sure that I know where everything is, what everything is, and what the islands are. So we'll go through the scene, then we'll look at the storyboards, then they'll show me all the, the, the marks on the floor, whether they're pieces of tape, or if I'm fortunate enough, I'll get a, a tennis ball. Everything that I need in order to just kind of play. I don't hit it every time. <laughs> sure. none, of, none of us do. None of us do. I, I think my, my, my take record is like 28. I think that's the, <laughs> 28 is, is the record. And every once in a while, I'll be like, what take was that? <laughs> They're like, no, you're still good. Still, still good. Nowhere near 28. 
I don't remember my record, but I know it was it was up there. I oh know my gosh! Up there. Yeah, well, because also you know you not only have to worry about the performance aspect of 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 being Barney, but then you, what is, what is your sight line like? Because I can't imagine hitting an X on the floor for lighting without being able to, without having a mask on. What, what, what was that like? You know, it, it's funny because we probably have this in common too. I always tell people I have superpowers, which mm -hmm. is my senses. I, you know, mm. I really developed my senses, my eyesight, my ear, all of that. Um, and I, you know, over the years got really good at being able to kind of hit a mark and obviously yeah. I was using all kinds of tricks to do that. But, but when you're doing the, the creative part right, there's definitely times I ran past my mark or there's definitely a time that yes. I tripped over or I bumped a kid or you know, something of, the, of that nature. You can only focus so much on both, right? There's, there's a point where yeah. you've got to make a decision. You know, yeah. okay, I'm gonna do a jump here. Oh, that jump was too big or what? what yes, what? yeah, because of the frame. Right. You're like, you're, we, we lost your head entirely, so we can't use it. Like, ah, well, right, when, take when 28 you, it is. Right, when you rehearsed this, you didn't jump that high or, or whatever it may be. <laughs> we didn't expect you to do that. Well, I didn't expect to do it either, so. Yeah. But, but I'm with you on the fact that when I started, I was, I was afraid of that a little bit, right? I was huh. afraid to cost takes. I didn't want to be the one yeah. to yeah. cost takes. And then they kind of came to me and did kind of the same thing, because... I had a crew like that too, who just loved the mm. kids and we were all in this together. And there was a time where they would, they would help me. I had an amazing crew doing that too. You know, cameramen going. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Way. Or they'll just hit the wheel and just go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, but I think there is a point where you release this and go, you know what, you got this job. They want you here, you know, you know what you're doing. Go do it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it definitely takes an army. And that's, that's something that I get a lot of credit because I'm, I'm, I'm the only visible human, uh, like 99% of the time, but the uh, animation department, the crew, that's, that'll never be on camera. Um, they are the army that makes it work. You know, theater is, I, 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 I always appreciated leads in musicals that I've worked on where the lead actor was just a part of the cast. They didn't separate themselves as higher or more important because the, the only reason the audience believes who they are on stage is because the rest of the cast gives them that power. And um, so any success that I have on screen making something look a certain way is because of that army that's giving me that power. They, they're in charge of making sure that animation is right in my eye line. And no matter how many times they told me just to stay on that X and I wonder <laughs> if it can, it'll move. Um, and so it's, it's, it takes an army and, and a very supportive army at that. Like, I'm so glad that we both have that in common because how much more difficult would this job be if, if, we were working with a bunch of jerks. <laughs> it, it would be near impossible. Because, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, no one on, on my set, it sounds like your set as well, was just accepting a paycheck. Obviously, we all have to get paid, yeah. but yeah. their heart was there in everything they did, and yeah. it, it was it was it was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, so, let's go back here for a moment. In your in your early days. You know, learning singing and dancing. And that. Where did all this come from? It came from, so the singing is, uh, came from two places. I'm Filipino, so there's a lot of karaoke in my life, um, <laughs> which is so funny because now I've grown to despise karaoke just because I'm like, oh, I don't want to, like, I, I'm a very, I'm, I'm an extroverted introvert. So I love performing, not so much for the attention, but for the expression. Okay. Um, uh, but outside of that, it's it's very uncomfortable for me to 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 be out there. Like when I was younger, I was very very shy, and I still am a shy person. Uh, and if you talk to my family once you got me started, good luck. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> up until that point, um, so there was singing and there was karaoke, but I didn't really really start singing until 
uh, Blue's Clues came along. And I guess they all kind of technology came at the right time because at that point you could only do karaoke at a bar or something, right? right and, yeah. As a kid, you're not going to a bar. Right. Uh, so it was in the advent of, um, I'm trying to, uh, video discs. It was either a DVD, a video desk, a video disc. Um, and then, so there was, now you could have karaoke at home and DVDs at home. And there were like karaoke systems that my family would bring back from the Philippines, um, which they got by way of like Singapore or China or something like that. And um, at that same time, Blues Clues had happened. And like I had mentioned before, I thought Steve was doing an opera singer. And I was like, oh, that's fun. I like to sing my voice like this. And so that's what I would do. And uh, that's how I fell in love with singing. And so that turned into choir, into um, uh, fast forward to uh, my town, my school district. Once you got to eighth grade, um, you were lumped in with the high school. Uh, but you couldn't do any of the high school sports because none of the other schools were like that. So you were just kind of sharing the building. Uh, so you could do the clubs. Um, and uh, my sister, my older sister was like, okay, now that you're in the high school, you're going to audition for the musical. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, it's like, it's a good way to get to know people. You get to, you know, uh, pad your resume for college. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And you weren't nervous about it? You just jumped in and did it? It's like, yeah, yeah I, I was definitely nervous for the audition. I was always nervous for the audition. Everything is, especially when you're a kid, everything is super important. Um, yeah. And it's the biggest moment of your life. And, uh, but once I got there, it's, it's, it's so true. Yeah. I, you know, like I have uh, nephews and, and friends of, and kids' friends, um, friends' kids. Uh, and whenever they're upset and their commitment to letting you know that they're upset is incredible. Uh, and it's because every moment is a super important uh, moment in, in, in their life. And, and that continues into adulthood. But I feel like as a kid, that's everything. We can shrug things off more. It's like, oh, I didn't get the job. That's fine. Next. Right. It's let's, intensified. Let's, uh, yeah. Think, right. Yeah. 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 You know that, you know, this is just how life is. Right. Um, but you're learning that as a kid. So I was most definitely nervous about auditioning. Uh, but then once I was in the show, it was great. And I had no aspirations to become an actor at all. Uh, and it wasn't until um, my junior year of high school, we did a show that the director wrote. And the director later, uh, he was a, an alumni he was an alumnus. Is that what it is? An alumnus of the of, of our high school? Okay. Is that yeah. right? Did I use that? I think you're right. right. He was an alumnus of the high school and he came back while he was going to school at Montclair State University in New Jersey uh, to direct our, our musical. And he wrote, insanely talented guy, uh, he wrote a show called The Bagel Factory, uh, which I got the lead in that year. And because of that, I was able to get a scholarship to Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, they have a summer musical wow. conservatory. Mm -hmm. And from there, that's when I realized, oh, this is the first time I'd ever been around people that that's what they wanted to do for a living, kids. And I was like, oh, oh, this is a thing you can do. And it was terrifying. Uh, but at the same time, I was like, I feel so comfortable around these people. And I, I think this is what I need to do. And then I told my parents, and they're like, okay. And they talk to my teachers and like, Josh is a smart kid. Again, so much support and so much room to fail. Uh, uh, I had the luxury of having room to fail, which a lot of people don't have. It, it's, uh, so, it's absolutely so important. I've talked about yeah. this before with myself. My, my parents, you know, when I told them I was going to be a purple dinosaur, they didn't know what the heck that meant, but they said, go do it. So, yeah. so and I'm glad you had that. Yeah, it's, and I, I wouldn't be here without that room to fail. And then I went to Montclair State, where my teacher, uh, where my director went. And that director later went on to be a Tony-nominated actor. Um, his name is Rob McClure. And he was, uh, they just had opened Mrs. Doubtfire. As he was playing Mrs. Doubtfire when uh, COVID happened. And they had to, 
to to come down but like again i it was it was that kind of support like i had that passion and that room to fail from rob as a director and teacher without ever he never pushed anything onto us he always required us to work hard and to have pride in our work and to care about each other on stage and the teachers and the producers of our high school musical we always drove that home like if we had those things there's no way that the show could be bad um and he he, he was never like you should be an actor it was never a career thing people would go to him and ask him a question about hey you know like what's it like to to go to school for theater and so that's what I did after uh, Paper Mill. And so that's how I auditioned for Montclair State University. And that's eventually where I went to school. And it was at the right time that I went there because I think the, pro the musical theater program was about three years old at that time. So it was still small, small enough that I could play any, play any role that I wanted um, as far as casting. And I was able to do a ton of shows and different uh, roles that I would never be cast in, a, in the professional world uh, just because of the way that I looked and, and, and who I am. Uh, and again, given that room to fail and that room to explore, and I was able to get into the dance department there where I first really started dancing. It was always, uh, dance was always around in my life, but my, my older sister, my little sister, they were the dancers. And... Um, they were amazing dancers and that's how I was at least familiar with that. And they were the ones that gave me notes whenever they saw the shows and I so valued them. And they were, they would tease me in uh, the brother sister way, but sure. like they were so, it was incredibly helpful. Um, and so that's where that respect for dance came from, from them. And then once I got into class and I was like, oh man, what is this? This is amazing. I started to work hard in that because I loved it so much. And, and th there was that uh, part of my college career where I really loved um, concert dance, which I'd never known about. And I was able to explore that world. And by the time I graduated, I'd able, been able to spread my, myself out and strengthen and stretch muscles that by the time I graduated, I had all these skills that I had never dreamed of having when I first started college. Um, but that's, that's really how I started. It was like, follow your passion and uh, you know, follow advice, but also um, keep, a, keep, a, keep a clear head and, and 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 you know follow your gut and you know uh what my what my teacher said to my parents that that made them feel okay with the terrifying thing of my kid wants to be an actor right. you know, my parents my, my parents are immigrants <laughs> they they came from you know they came from a third world country and like the last thing i'm sure they wanted to hear was that i'm going to pick a, a life of po probable poverty right. um and hardship right. um and so the thing that my teacher said that that really gave them uh, a lot of hope and uh, was that Josh is a smart kid, um, you know, and if there's any time to try something, it's when he's young uh, because he can still recover and there's time to make mistakes. Um, and uh, yeah, if if it hadn't been for the support of my family and the support of my teachers, along the way and then after i graduate graduated college the support of my then girlfriend now wife like if i didn't have that room to make mistakes i wouldn't be in this show at all or i wouldn't even be in this business so i can just imagine what they all feel when you get this role <laughs> i can I yeah can just imagine what it's been like for your family and friends and teachers and everything to see you go into this position. Yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible because my, we watched the show growing up. We know what this show is and we know what this job is. And, you know, like to be a working actor, forget about fame, to be a working right. actor is the dream. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that was my dream. 
and uh, the fame aspect of it, that those are like pipe dreams. They're like, yeah, that'd be nice, but it was never the goal. I, I never want, wanted to be famous and I still don't want to be famous. Um, I just want to continue to work and have a good time. Uh, but now to be able to do the show, being who I am, there was definitely an identity, uh, cri identity crisis in school because, uh, and then after I graduated from school, I, all that I wanted to be was ethnically ambiguous so that I could play these different roles. Um, and it wasn't until I started to be around people that looked like me and other people that didn't look like me that were so um, authentic in who they are and they weren't trying to be ethnically ambiguous. They're like, no, I'm like, I'm black. I'm, I'm white. I'm, I'm, I'm Latino. Like I, I'm Asian. <laughs> I can't hide that. I, my, my dream role is to be um, action or Arab from, uh, from in, in the Jets and West Side Story. <laughs> and I had the opportunity to audition for that in a serious production. And I remember being so prepared and learning all the choreography in, in, in the auditions and the callbacks and everything. Uh, I didn't end up getting it, but because I had that chance and I was so prepared and I felt like I killed it, I could let it go. I was like, wow, I, I never thought I would ever get that opportunity in my life. But that kind of authenticity didn't come through until I realized like, Josh, you're Asian. Your problem, the, the, the problem of you not getting cast because this role is a certain way is not your fault. That is just the way that the industry is. That is the way that it was written because of uh, the landscape of the industry. Um, and I think once I started realizing like, just be yourself and what do you love? Uh, and explore that like photography. Um, if I didn't explore my love for photography, we wouldn't have the ability to shoot um, any of the extra content that we've been shooting in response to COVID for the show. Um, like I, I, I know lighting, I know um, how to work a camera and to record audio and all because I was like, all right, let me just follow my passions. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, pieces of advice that um, a castmate told uh, a group. And I was like, oh yeah, that's an amazing piece of advice is to um, cultivate your other interests and your other loves. Like acting is the thing that you do and that you love, but it it's not the only thing that you do and that you love. You don't have one favorite color. You have many favorite colors. Um, so explore that. And I, I think that's, that, that has a lot to do with uh, everything, everything, why I'm here. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very interesting. I came from a, you know, we, we shot the show in Texas, so we were not oh my gosh. part of, of the typical industry. And I came for a very inclusive set. Um, you know, several of the actors were little people, every race, every gen, every, everything. And it was never looked upon that way. It, it was always about the talent, right? It was always about the yeah. performers or the crew or all of that. And I, I'm so excited to see this happening yeah. within the industry because I can understand you being a Filipino and being able to represent that, how important that is. But yeah. at the same time, you're just a talented actor and you should have that position because you're a talented actor. Yeah. And I think when we get to that point and realize that, you know, diversity is so important, but if you're just hiring the best people, it's going to be diverse. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really interesting because I, I, I get to be, me and the part wasn't written to be x or y right uh and I, and during my final callback it was it was two guys and two girls and it was like um i was like oh cool this is like they had auditioned over three thousand people for this role uh -huh. um which is like they were really looking and i think i remember what's really struck me my first callback because it was with the producers was that the only guy in the room was the camera op. And I remember being like, oh, this is different. Because every other audition that I'd been with, been in, there was only really one or two women in the room and it was all a table of men. It was all, it was all men uh, primarily. And, and it had been 
flipped and I was like, oh, things are different. Things are changing. You know, the diversity is not just happening on screen, but it's starting to happen uh, on the other side of the camera, which is so important to me um, because that's the only way that things will get made. And it's not just, you know, it just is. It's, it's, it's a, it's a it's beautiful thing. All of our producers were women. When we, when, when we were shooting Barney, and this was back in, you know, the, the beginning of 2000. Uh, yeah. And our, we had producers in the 90s doing that. But I think because we weren't typical, we, you know, we were, yeah. we were Texan, we weren't union, we were kind of out doing our own thing and learning. And so it really was, you know, about talent. And I don't think they, yeah, you weren't checking off. So it, it's, it's fascinating. I think that's, I think that has a lot to do with the success of Barney and the success of Blue's Clues. And, uh, yeah, you know, if, if we really want to go into uh, like musical theater, the success of Hamilton, you have it a completely, you're, yes, you have an insanely diverse cast on stage, but then you have a more diverse creative team that's making the show. So if, if anybody's ever felt like, oh yeah, uh, Broadway feels kind of stagnant, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, look at the program and look at what the creative team looks and identifies as. It's the same. Um, and once you start getting those like different stories from different perspectives, that's when you're really gonna start to see change. But again, it's those people that are working on the, on the outskirts of, of the norm that are changing, uh, changing the path. And that's just because they're surrounding themselves with good talented people that they love and uh yeah it's 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 really really uh, a hopeful however scary or stressful today these times are i do feel like it's because we're on the cusp of huge change and um which which is making uh people entrenched and like doubling down try to try to stop progress well, um, and I, right, and it, I hope people are realizing, you know, from just the COVID aspect of this, that we need each other. Yeah, right? we, we, you know, we, we're against something we haven't been able to figure out, and then we're fighting with each other when we need each other the most. Yeah, and 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 how 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 amazing is it that like when we were all together, a lot of the time we would be on our devices and on our phones and disconnected to our devices but disconnected from each other. And now that we're so connected to our devices and disconnected from physically being with each other, there's that, that realization is like, oh no, that was important. That is so important. Um, even when I'm at the gym, like I, I need that extra energy from the person there. It's like, oh, they're working hard. Like this is a place of work as opposed to just kind of like being by yourself like we're, we're we're humans we're social beings social animals and um we need each other now more than ever no question i i gotta know before we finish up i gotta know what it was like doing that episode and bringing steve and bringing them in i, I thought it was just such a brilliance to have have you all together when you brought the show back what was that like for you it was amazing because I got to like we're we're very close friends, um, uh, Steve and Donovan and I, and um, it was like meeting your cousins. And now we're I think we've we've only met uh, we've only been in the room like a handful of times, but we're there is that bond like we're brothers, and I'm so thankful to them for their support and again their their space to make help let me make mistakes. Um, but because of Steve's costume, he wears green. And so he can't be on green screen. So he has to be on blue screen. So the way that they did it was they actually did a split screen of blue drape and our green screen. And because uh, Steve and Donovan were talking to each other uh, in the show and then talking to me, what they did was they filmed them together and they taped me separately. So I got the chance to watch. And that was when I was like terrified. Wow. And so I got to see them play and just be so relaxed and see them make mistakes and see them do takes and still be relaxed and still play. And that was the, that was the switch for me where I was like, oh, Josh, you know how to play. 
this is like, why are you, why are you white knuckling so hard? And that's when I started to realize like, oh, and I think I, we had shot two days already. We had already shot two days um, of just me. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is so helpful and so encouraging to me. And in real, they are in real life the way that they are in the show. They're so supportive and they give you so much energy and, and care. And uh, yeah, never meet your heroes unless they're Steve Burns and, and, and Donovan Patton. I, I had my moment. I got to meet Carol Spinney that played Big Bird for all those years. I worked with him. And that was, I had my moment. And so I know exactly, exactly what you're especially, talking about. Especially in, you, ha, you have such a special relationship. While I watched Big Bird growing up, you were doing the same exact thing. And you, you, only you both can understand what that job is. How can you connect to a kid on the other side of the screen through X amount of inches of fabric and in the dark? <laughs> Like that's such a specific job and such a specific art that only you guys could understand what that is. And like how amazing that they weren't a jerk. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and I mean, I had been doing it for years and I still was a nervous, nervous wreck. I yeah. Mean, I, I really meeting him was, you know, you're trying to be cool and you're, you know, you're trying yeah. to, you've been doing it a long time. Right. I mean, yeah. You didn't just, just get this job. I'd been doing this for a long time. And, but it's Carol Spinney, and yeah, he's legend. such a gracious, which he's such a wonderful man, which you see. I've, I've never met anyone in this industry of children's entertainment that was a jerk. There probably is someone out there. I've never found them. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I learned when I was, I started when I was young, uh, I was 23, very quickly that there's a responsibility to being in this children's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not just like I, I was just looking for a job and then very quickly I saw the kids reactions and I went uh, oh this is something completely different right I can't yeah. be I can't be mad I can't be sad I can't be having a bad day I've got to find whatever I need to for energy and all of that because mm -hmm. they didn't come to see sad Carrie they came to see Barney yeah. and Barney's never sad where do you find your energy um, to bring that to the to the screen every every show yeah that's it's that is such an amazing point because uh, i a lot of i have found um that acting is the thing that i love to do um but what makes it a job the th like you can be an actor and not get paid and it's right. it's the same thing what makes it a job is that you are paid to check your baggage at the door um, which is challenging at times because you can't really check in because either the audience, the audience will always suffer. They'll be like, well, that was bad. Right. Or your crew and cast could suffer because they could get injured because of, uh, you weren't paying attention or something like that. Um, so I found that like, oh, the job of being an actor isn't a, isn't, a large part of the job is, is to check your baggage at the door. Um, the crew helps a lot with that. I mean, it gets difficult because uh, my wife last season and the season before was doing Jersey Boys. Uh, and so she could not be in Toronto. We couldn't be together. Um, and that got definitely challenging just because I was homesick all the time. Uh, but the crew was a huge part about that success. And then again, having a relationship with that person on the other side of the glass, um, that was really, really helpful. And being in character, um, the thing that I did take some getting used to, and so I was, I was used to that, you know, check your baggage at the door. I, I learned that early on um, uh, working. But what I found because of this specific job, um, because like, my name is Josh in the show and my name is Josh in real life is that like, I can't, like you said, get mad or, or whatever, which is so difficult because you're a human being. Right. Um, and you do have to give yourself permission. Like, you know, you're not always going to be at your best, 
But what the wonderful thing about the responsibility of the show is I am forced to confront those knee-jerk reactions. Like my wife and I were living in New York City and uh, like that is like the town of knee-jerk reactions. Everyone's on top of each other. It's either super hot or super cold. Um, and, you know, people are just trying to get from point A to point B. And sometimes the interactions between are not the most neighborly. Right. Um, you know? Yeah. And so like having this job really has made me think I'm breathing a lot more. I'd be like, let it go. It's, is it, is it worth it to be angry? Uh, or is it worth it to take this kind of resentment with you? No, like, you know, it just is what it is. And because of that responsibility, life has gotten so much easier just in my demeanor, you know, um, whether it be dealing with a temper or, you know, we all get mad, we all get sad. Uh, process, I, I'm, I'm forced to process my emotions as opposed to just like go with it and then brush it to the side, uh, which isn't helpful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, you know, that responsibility has, of the show has, has really come in handy with just my overall well-being as a person. And I'm so thankful for that, but it is, it is, we are works in progress. And, you know, while I'll never be perfect, uh, that doesn't mean that I can't work on it. And it's, it's been, it's been better because of it. Well, I can see why you've been so successful. Your, your wisdom is amazing. Oh, geez. <laughs> and, and obviously yeah, I, I've learned a lot and, and your passion for what you do. And uh, congratulations. On Thank you. This, this has been so, so wonderful, especially because we do have that shared bond of working in children's television and working on important shows yeah. like Blue's Clues is important for me. And uh, Barney is, is such an important show for, for my sister and for so many people that, you know, there is that, that bond of children's television and the fact that, you know, we didn't get into this business like knowing that we we just kind of like oh I guess I guess we're here. <laughs> Absolutely, um, my girlfriend and her kids were so excited. <laughs> They're like Blues Clues. Are you kidding? I mean, they were just going crazy. So it, it's I think it's just very special what you've been able to continue not only to continue with it but to grow it. You know, I think it's it's so important what you've done um, in your new role. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a team effort. Hey, I, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah. Could you sing a little something for me to? Yeah. What, what can I say? I can do, um, uh, thanks for doing your part. You sure are smart. You sure worked hard when you use your mind. Take a step at a time. You can do anything that you want to do. <laughs> thank you so much. How can you not smile at that? <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Josh, to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Carrie. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for having me. And thank you for everything that you've done in children's television and for us. Uh, because it, is, it, is, it has been the foundation for everything that we stand on. And so it um, makes my job um, uh, so much easier to do because there were examples before. Well, thank you. And keep doing what you're doing. I, I just... I'm very happy for you. I, I, lo I love seeing what's going on there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Purple Roads. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your Purple Road. We'll see you next week.